um, and shared business ideas. We're very similarly minded. Um, we run our businesses very, very differently. And so being the bright gal she is, she said, hey, you're doing your Instagram thing. It's a little bit different than the way I'm doing it. Will you pop on my group and just tell people um, what's working for you? So let me make it really, really clear. I am like not the Instagram expert. This is my experience. I started in July. I've done about $30,000 in personal volume and about 90% of that has been from Instagram. And I don't mean Instagram parties. I mean like my Instagram feed. I mean, people are shopping my feed. Um, they're maybe direct messaging me, hey, send me a link to that item, that kind of thing. Um, I am a stay-at-home mom of three-year-old triplets and a five-year-old. My husband's active duty army, and he's actually TDY right now in Kansas, a thousand miles away. So um, to say life is a little bit crazy is an understatement. And I chose Instagram as my main funnel because it's the platform that I enjoy most. Like I personally have the most fun there and Zaya, I want it to be a happy place. So that's why I chose Instagram. And then also because I could batch my work on Instagram. Um, I don't have to tell anybody watching this right now, like Facebook does require a reactive mode to some degree. And maybe in a different season of life, I can do that. I just can't right now. So I need to be able to batch my work like morning nap time, uh, as well as in the evening. And Instagram does allow me to do that. So the things that I'm going to talk about, <laughs> one, and this was a um, suggested um, just insight from somebody in this group, personal or business. Um, I'm also going to talk about content. I call it the three P's. I'm going to talk about hashtag strategy, the 10, 10, 10 strategy, and then also your algorithm. I am going to be looking at the comments and whatnot. And so like, if you have other questions or anything, please for sure interact. I've got a hard 10 minute cutoff kids, man. Um, <laughs> so it is what it is, but I'll follow some of the comments, um, as we go today as well. And again, just try to share the love because you guys are going to be helping me with Facebook at some point. So, um, anyway, personal or business, this is my recommendation. So the school of thought is your algorithm will be better if you have a personal account. That said, I do not recommend you have a personal account. I recommend that you have a business account, um, and it be a public account. Here's why. Look at any industry stuff for Instagram for 2019. Look at Q Q4 2018. Shopping is going to be huge. The engaged consumer on Instagram is purchasing and Instagram knows this. And if you Google Shopping Explorer, it was supposed to launch actually in October. It's been pushed back a bit. It's anticipated Q1 2019. Basically, you know how so IGTV in April, right? It wasn't a thing, and now it is. It's just like you've got a YouTube channel on your Instagram. Um, you know how now you can go into that Explore page and see other people's IGTV videos? They're saying, they, the insiders are saying it's going to be the same thing with shopping, i.e. you could find products, you could find things from folks that you're not currently connected with with, some of, with that different channel feature. It's not going to be a standalone app. Um, again, I'm not an expert on this, but I've been following it from an industry perspective. Businesses are going to have access to be part of this shopping explorer. So one, you want a business account. So you have that functionality to tag your stuff for your feeds, to tag your stuff for your stories, but also so you can be part of the shopping explorer channel. Additionally, you can look at your, just like you would with Facebook, you can look at your uh, business insights, right? So I can look and see that my the people that I'm connected to, I like to call her my ideal client. She's somebody that purchases from me. My ideal client is checking Instagram at about 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Those are the high traffic times. How do I know this? Because Instagram tells me so. <laughs> and if I didn't have a business account, I wouldn't know that. So um, I, I have asked, I have a business coach for this because, um, girl, I don't have time, okay? So she learned a lot of this stuff for me, and then I pass it on to my friends. Um, and I've asked her outright, like, man, do you think I'd hang in people's feeds a little bit more if it was my personal account. When I first started, I'm like, I'm connected with a thousand people. You want me to start at zero? In her experience, because she's coached people that do both, the, the preference for the feed or the algorithm favor for a personal account is not that much more. The benefits of having a business account far outweigh what that would be. So take it or leave it, girlfriends. Uh, my recommendation is to do a business account. Second thing, 
talking about Instagram content, I don't think this is going to be terribly different than what you're doing over on Facebook or in a VIP group or anywhere. But when I onboard folks with my team, we encourage them in terms of content to use the three P's. And that is, that means like categories of the types of things that you're going to post. One, personality. Two, purposeful. Three, product. You know what product is, right? This should be about 20% of your overall content should be product related. This is Zaya stuff, y'all. This is stock photos. This is pictures of you in the photos, whatever. You're gonna find that that percentage goes up around the holidays a little bit more. Um, but as an overall, they say about 20%. Y'all, you can look at my feed on Run Live Zaya. I'm probably a little, I'm definitely product heavy right now, so I need to practice what I preach. Um, but product is anything they could go to your my, myzaya.com website and see. Personality. This is what connects you with your ideal client. For me, I'm a mom, I'm a runner, I like reality TV. It's any of this weird, quirky stuff. I'm a garage gym girl. It's any of this weird, quirky stuff that lets them in on your life. It's maybe a little bit self-deprecating. It lets your personality shine through. Um, one of my most per uh, popular personality posts was <laughs> where, like, yeah, I did, did take a picture of this. I took a picture because, y'all, I put my underwear on sideways that day because that's just the kind of day I was having. Insane. But it's a great way to demonstrate personality. Your stories are going to do this for you as well. Kind of that talking about nothing. You want your content to demonstrate your personality. Um, something I like to uh, remind folks is products are easy to quit. Zaya, easy to quit. People, hard to quit. Okay. Personality is where people are going to connect to you. Easy to quit a product hard to quit a person. If you're engaging folks with your personality, when the market is saturated with Zaya reps, they're not gonna quit you. So that's just something to remember. And then purposeful. So again, we've got product, personality, purposeful in terms of content, the types of things that you're posting. Purposeful is anything that adds value without somebody having to become your customer. So um, I am a retired, <laughs> I don't do it anymore, um, but I used to be a running coach. So oftentimes I will tell people like, hey, this is a workout you can do. This is a way to organize you know, your life around training. It could be, thank you, I like, oh, thank you, Courtney. Um, it could be, um, you've got a great recipe. Everybody just bought an Instant Pot on Black Friday, so maybe you've got a great Instant Pot. Uh, you could put in stories like demonstrating, chucking all your stuff in there. Um, I, purposeful, purposeful stuff is anything of value. It's that giving the value first, right? Um, that someone could benefit from. I know there are a lot of health and fitness people just because you guys are, um, you're connected with Amy. Um, you've got a lot of really, really great, that health and fitness knowledge bank, right? It gives you credibility, but you can provide a lot of purposeful content. I think there are also some photographers on this team. Look, everybody on Instagram is a budding photographer. That's why there's filters there. You could give tips on capturing pictures in the holidays or something like that. That's great, great purposeful uh, content. So again, when you're thinking about your content plan, you got product, personality, and purposeful. The product is necessary, we sell stuff. Try to keep it around 20%. Um, the personality, that's what you really want to drive home because it's easy to quit a product, hard to quit a person. Um, and then that purposeful will keep them coming back to your account and engaging, which is going to help you stay in the feeds of your would-be customers. Um, speaking of, of your would-be customers, the third thing I want to talk about, um, nap time, you can watch the replay. Um, <laughs> the third thing I want to talk about is hashtag strategy. So this is probably going to change in 2019. It feels like Instagram is a working document. But in 2019, they're working on where you can still apply hashtags, but be able to hide them, okay? So it wouldn't be like a post of sideways underwear and then like hashtag mom problems and all this, you know, 30 different things. Um, as of now, though, you can post up to 30 hashtags within an Instagram post. I use a 10-10-10 strategy. And what that means is... 10 of my, and this is rough, okay guys, but roughly 10 of my hashtags are related to that post. For example, today we decorated the Christmas tree. Go check me out at Run Lift Zaya. We put it on our porch because y'all, I have little kids. Um, so anyway, so like some of the hashtags were like, deck the halls, deck the porch, Christmas tree, that kind of thing. It's related directly to that post. 
the next 10 are going to be related to my ideal client. My ideal client is a mom. I don't know who your ideal client is. What I love about Zaya is there's enough of the piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. I'm after moms who like garage gyms and have an interest in running. Um, <laughs> they're moms. And so I've got hashtag mom life be like. I've got, you know, hashtag motherhood, motherhood on plugs, those kind of things. That relates to my ideal client. That's the second 10. And then the third 10 is going to be something broad where all of your, like, stupid professional Instagrammers are going to give you likes and engagement that's going to help your algorithm. Hashtag fitness. Hashtag fit girl. Hashtag, y'all you know what I'm talking about. The things that when you put in there, there's, like, 3 million hits on it. Yeah, you're going to want a handful of those. And if you're smart, you'll also be using your business name as well. On mine, I have hashtag run lift Zaya on pretty much everything. I've got run lift uh, motherhood, run lift mom, just in case I ever want to rebrand myself. Go ahead and make your business name a hashtag. That way you're easy to find because you know what? Um, in January, I'm doing a partnership with like a subscription box company. I was able to get a bunch of those hair ties printed off and just put hashtag run lift Zaya. It doesn't matter where they go. They can find me via hashtag run lift Zaya. I don't have to tell them like, this is the platform. This is my account name because I've made my hashtag part of my brand. The fourth thing that I want to talk about, um, and it is kind of interrelated is the algorithm on Instagram. It's always changing. You guys, it's just like Facebook and it's always changing. Pause. That's worth mentioning. Don't let me come off as this person that's like, oh, Instagram's the jam and you guys are silly if you're over there on Facebook. Because at the end of the day, Mark Zuckerberg owns Facebook or owns Instagram just like he owns Facebook. And so a big push for me, and I, look, I don't want to go off the rails too much, but a big push for me in 2019 is going to be to build up my email distribution because I own that email list. Case in point, on Zaya Wednesday, my tagging rights on Instagram, my main funnel, you guys, I didn't exist. I exist on Facebook as a storefront only for my business to be a good community partner. Like, Instagram's pretty much the only place I exist. I have a couple hundred people on my email list. That's it. <laughs> so my tagging rights get taken away. On new release Wednesday. On Zaya Wednesday. <laughs> I'm up a creek, right? Um, and so if I had paid more attention to my email list, and this is what I'm telling my team, like for the people that just onboarded, I'm like, I don't care what your main funnel is going to be. Make sure you build that email list because you own it. So all the problems people are having with Facebook right now, it's probably going to happen, especially as Shopping Explore <laughs> Um you know, it, it's going to happen over on Instagram too. So time back in, we will talk about algorithm. I just want to like, it's not super happy land over at Instagram. We're probably next. Uh, the Instagram people are probably next as far as um, Mark Zuckerberg owns us too. That said, with the algorithm, you can, you can um, get favor with the Instagram algorithm. Instagram likes when you use all their features. What do I mean by that? I mean Instagram TV, I mean stories, I mean lives, I mean even that silly super zoom, which I think is completely ridiculous. But when I started using it every so often, I did see my engagement go up. I saw in my stories suddenly instead of 150 people, 200 people are viewing it within the first couple of hours, um, right? It's a numbers game. And if you've got that business account, you can really play with some of these insights, but make sure that you're using all of the different features that will give you favor in the algorithm. And when I say, oh, favor in the algorithm, I mean, you're showing up in the feeds of the people that you are connected to. Um, another thing that you can do, Instagram wants it to be a community that's very much engagement and back and forth. A comment goes farther than a like. So for other people, a comment goes farther than a like. It helps you get, it helps your algorithm favor. A comment goes farther than a like, and you want to use always at least four words. I don't know why it's four words. It could be five words in a month, but for the last couple of months, it's four words. So if I'm, con I'm connected with a lot of you guys that I didn't even know were on this team, which is awesome because it just means like, I love all these people. But anyway, so check it out. Call me on it. Check me because typically I have commented four words, even if I didn't need to include a word in there, because if I'm going to comment anyway and make you feel good, um, I want it to help my algorithm. So instead of you go girl, Hey, you go girl, mm -hmm, that's four words. And that's going to help me. Whereas you go girl is not crazy, right? But you want to use four words. Let's see. Um, oh, tags. 
if you've got, oh, so if you've got, um, you know, tagging functionality for shopping, you don't always want to hit every single post with a shopping bag. You want to mix some of that stuff up. So if you've got a picture of a customer in a pair of light and tights, yeah, for sure, like tag those light and tights. But then the next time, tag the customer because that's going to get that into different feeds. You want to use a really nice mix of that. Um, and I know we talked about, you know, content a little bit. And everybody's doing this. But like a solid mix of stock photos as well as customer photos to create that um just that social energy as well as you know yourself in the stuff is certainly very helpful i think that's it again recommending business because of some of those things um, that are coming out with instagram remember mark owns instagram too so even if you are going over there um make sure that you're building up your email list and that you're sending people back to a main funnel that you own um three p's Product is going to be the least amount in terms of the content that you're posting. You want personality so people can't quit you. And then also purposeful content, whatever you're passionate about it, give them that value for free. Um, hashtag strategy. 10, 10, 10 is a really good one. I use Planoly um, just to batch my work. And it really helps with the hashtags as well because you can batch your hashtags. Also, if you've got an iPhone, you can use the text replacement to, um, like if you've got... 10 hashtags that relate to Zaya, you can type in, um, you know, Zaya and have all 10 hashtags come up. You'll know what I'm talking about. And I'll drop a link if you don't know what I'm talking about to show you how to set that up. It makes things stupid easy. Um, and then with the algorithm, make sure you're using all of the features. Always comment with four words. Um, mix things up in the tags. Did I miss anything? Looks like everybody's busy, busy. Um, I'm going to, so, I mean, yo, like I'm not a part of this nuclear team, but Amy's kind enough to let me, um, record this for the people that I'm onboarding as well. I didn't invite them in here cause I don't want them to get stuck into a comparison trap. Um, but I will also respond to some of the questions in the comments as you guys are watching this on replay again, not an expert, but I've built a pretty great business on Instagram and it works for my lifestyle and it keeps Zaya as my happy place. So um, you're welcome. Y'all have a good day.